Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back for the final part of our little gnome project. This is Renee Mullins Designs Plum Purdy. Uh, I ordered a bundle of all the bee stuff, and I did a tutorial for you guys with this little guy. So we're in the home stretch with him. I just have to add the details, and I just wanted to share with you how I finished some of the pieces, if anyone else out there got the bundle. Um, let's start with the Be Kind. She included the Be Kind stencil in the kit, but I didn't have the specific honeycomb uh, stencil. So let's look at the difference. Um, I think it's pretty good. I had this one and this one. And this is just my stash um, forever from doing mixed media, um, journaling, things like that. So this is kind of just like a little path of it, and then it connects, you know. And then this one's just a cheap, I'm sure, version of that because I used this on, I think I used it on here. I did two, oh, no, no. I used this one on here. So I used both of them. This one I used on here, and I think it looks adorable. It's not the same one she did. And then this one I did on here, and I sponged it on using kind of like a makeup sponge. I, I usually just cut the end off and reuse them until I can't anymore. I'm not an expert stenciler at all, and if you look at the be kind words, they're kind of bumpy and lumpy, and I did just take a liner brush and straighten it out where I could, but for the... I think it just looks adorable. I really love it. So um, that's done. I think I see I added all the detail lines. I also wanted to apologize because in this tutorial I wasn't following her directions very well and I was float I was so caught up in teaching the technique of floating <laughs> that I really wasn't paying attention to the painting of the project. I was more focused on teaching you how to load your brush correctly. So, if you guys got the kit and you have the directions, just follow Renee's directions. Um, either way, he's looking cute, so don't worry about it. Um, I finished this one. This is the Queen Bee, and I did not have a polka dot stencil. Shockingly, I didn't have just a straight little polka dot stencil. Now I could have dotted it with a stylus and that would have been fine. Used what, So what I ended up using, and it's very faint, I didn't really do it dark enough, but I can see it in person. Um, I used this, which kind of is a little bit of a honeycomb shape if you're up close to it. And it kind of looks like, to me, it looks like data from a computer or something, something that would print out on a computer, some type of computer language but um, that's what I used so um, the other thing I wanted to share was <clears throat> so yeah let's see I put she has in her directions that you should use a certain and I'm pretty sure I have it I just could not find it because I've really cleared my craft room of things that like I don't use all the time so that I could, it, it gets too overwhelming for me. So I put away a lot of other products. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you, she used for the Queen Bee something called, let's see, Glamour Dust. Sorry about that. Which is basically glitter. And I just had in my stash, I went and I know I have these um, varnishes and things with glitter in them. I have starlight varnish. I have, I didn't use this. This is called Dragonfly Glaze, which is supposed to be a color changing top coat. Um, Galaxy Glitter. That's what I used on, yeah, I, this one's not even open. But I love putting this on snow, on anything that, because I love glitter, I love shiny things. This is my all-time favorite sparkle varnish by Plaid, and I don't think they sell it anymore, and I'm at the very end. But this is probably a little bit more similar to the Galaxy Dust, or whatever she called it, because it's a fine glitter. This is a very thick glitter. So if you look on here, 
I'm going to try and come up. It's just glitter varnish uh, or glitter paint. It says heavily loaded glitter acrylic paint. So I put that on there, but then I did the fine one, the sparkle varnish, on his wings. On all, actually, on the little bee's wings I did that, but on the big bee, I put the, big, the bigger glitter. Um, so just use what you have is the point. Um, we all, as crafters, go out and buy all these products, and then, you know, if someone else uses something different, we'll think, well, I have to get what they use, and you really don't. Um, it'll look cute either way. So I wanted to share that. Also, I feel like I was missing this little flower in my kit. I don't, I probably dropped it or it got lost somewhere. So I'm going to add, I just went and found these, which I could not find, but I'm pretty sure I have a little flower button. I'm going to try and find a pink one. Little tiny one like this. Let's see. I have purple. I hope I can find pink. Yay, I did. So I knew I had these in my stash. And I'm going to glue that right to the top of his little body. Just because I feel like it. Because it matches this one. And so I'm going to take a little dab of, this is um, Weld Bond. I use it for um, my mosaics, my inside mosaics, because this is a water-based glue. And I'm just going to take a little right behind his neck and stick that down. Ta-da! What do you think? Perfect. I'm filming. Anywho, so, you know, that way, because I think I, I didn't get another one that was supposed to go there, so I just made do with what I have. <laughs> so there you go. And then I haven't varnished it yet, but I'll just, I'm going to let that dry. And I also had, like, other things that I was thinking. So let's get back to our little uh, gnome. But see, it's good. When we, as crafters, we have things that we can use. You don't have to have everything. All right, let me just cover up my glue. What else did I want to tell you? So the stenciling, this one I finished. Yeah, and I just used the different, um, the different honeycomb pattern on that. So I just have to varnish. I think I did the little wings with the same glitter varnish. They're not that sparkly. Um, so what we're going to do, let me just see if there was anything else I wanted to tell you. This one, oh, it needs to dry. This one. And the Be Kind. So I think that's it. Yes. All right. So let's get back to the gnome. Now, ugh, all we have to do on him, I think I put the little, the fine glitter on his wings. You see that? And it's just a little shine. But I might go over it again with the uh, thicker glitter. So I'm going to grab the directions for that. Blooms and Bees Gnome. I'm just going to go to finishing. So it says, she's using Gorilla Glue Gel, which I do have as well, and it's a very good glue. And I actually am using it in my aqua sculpting, so, or uh, aqua scaping. <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so, I already glued him down. I glued all the pieces using the Weld Bond into place, except for my little bee, which is right here. Um, we're going to paint, though, using, I think it was... Uh, the stand and the base. So I painted my stand with, and she talks about how because it's laser cut, there's a thicker side where the, it fits better. So just, if you got the kit, just read what she says, please. Please follow Renee's um, directions because I was not focused on what I was doing. But it's golden straw shaded with burnt sienna. And then we're going to do... Uh, I gotta get my titanium white. Actually, I have to look at each thing individually. So I'm gonna go start at the top with the wings. 
highlight the tops of the wings with titanium white they're all done the hat okay uh, highlight along the top with white okay the nose and the hands with white paint the highlight line and dot along the top of the nose so that I already finished shading it's glued down I'm just gonna put a little let me put it on well I'll put it right here when you do dots you want to have a little mound of paint like a little bubble of paint and I'm just using a stylus I'm looking for my picture See this little, there's a little stroke and a dot. Oh, and I didn't dot my hat. All right, so we're going to dot the hat. These stripes will be dotted using your stylus and titanium white. So I'm just going to go in with my stylus and just start dotting. I'll probably do two at a time equally spaced then they because they will gradually get smaller the more dots you make it's just a way that you can keep them a little bit more uniformed and I'm kinda just putting it in between the other one that looks good she actually has three rows and I only did two but I think that looks perfectly cute. All right, and then we're gonna do a little stroke. Now I'm gonna use a liner brush and white. I could, you could use a number one. Let's see, this is a number 10 slash zero. I think I might try this one. When you do a stroke, you want your um, paint very wet so that it kind of flows off the bristles like ink, like it would on a pen. And this is white, so you're not really going to be able to see it. I probably have a much better brush. The idea is, and I do like this liner brush as a rule, but I noticed that it had, the tip of it wasn't very pointy, and I kept getting a double line. But I'm going to try it with this one. It's a much stubbier brush, but here's all you need to do is, I'm in close. So we're going to put the tip down, go across and pick up. And I mean, it's okay. I don't love it, but it's it's getting the job done. Um, and then you're going to take your stylus and put a little dot. And it's just a highlight. It looks cute. It's not my best ever, <laughs> but whatever. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we're good. Just be careful you don't stick your, oh, the other thing we have to do is all these flowers get little dots, but I want to wait for that. Let's do the same thing to the hole on the, uh, I'm going to switch to a liner and just show you the difference. The little hole on the B scap. So you want to load your brush in, in a wet, like a little bit wet and just go put it down and kind of just pick up see how it yeah it was good enough it's not my favorite one either <laughs> and then just put a little dot at the end and then let me just I'm just following the picture because I I can't find everything when I read it so I'm, we're gonna dot his little outfit so I'm gonna go in Just start filling in some dots on his outfit. Uh, they're a little far apart. There's really no no wrong to this. You can't go wrong. Just start making dots and it's going to look cute. If you make two that are super close together, it might look a little awkward, but other than that, it's it's going to be fine. All 
I might want to put one more right here. And now he has a little polka dot outfit. See, the little details was always the most fun for me. She also has little lines. I want to say there's a little bit of a line on the B-Skep too, which if you got your floats nice and bright, you probably don't need, but I'm just going to throw it on there because you know why? Because it's fun. It's fun. So I am don't want to touch those dots, but I'm just going to go very gently here, here, here. Look how cute. Okay, what else? I think we're in the home stretch. Oh, she's got some on his shoes. So she actually goes this way and this way. And remember, I used that gloss paint. So it's mine's a little shiny. If it looks shiny, that's why. Because I use like a black gloss. And you just want to follow the line of the shoe. Oh, dear. <laughs> that was a lot, but... I kind of like it. It's a little crooked. What, this one's up too high. I'm going to take it off. So you just use a Q-tip and get it off of there. And I'll try it again. Why not? And all these little details are what really used to make it come to life for me. So. I'm going to try that again. Oh, I have a lot of water on my brush. That looks better. A little thick. And I just want to darken up his nose. Actually, on two cups of coffee, it's probably not good either. <laughs> good enough. I'm going to put a little dot at the end. And then I'm going to use that same dot uh, dotting tool to do the little flower centers. And I'm just going to highlight the tops of the centers where we did brown on the bottom. And this time I am just going to load it and just go like one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. That looks good. Got one up here. Am I in the shot? I am in the shot. Bum, 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 bum. All right. What else? Uh, let me come down a little so the whole thing is in the picture. Now we got to get that B on there. And see, that's why I left him off. But I just got to wait for the uh, all the dots to dry. And let me just... Oh, she did three dots on the shoe. Like she went... See how I don't follow directions? One, two three. One, two, three. So cute. And of course I have to do it like Renee, but if I didn't have these directions, whatever I did would be cute. You know, it's fine. The little bee has two little dots on his antenna. So here's my little bee. And I'm just going to put little dots on the tips of his antenna. And that's it. Oopsie. Some of the bees, I did do the same little line like this. I'm going to come up. Sorry. When I get too close, I forget and then I mess everything up. But see, I put a highlight here on him. I put one on this little guy. But look how cute that little flower looks. Oh my gosh. And I put one on him. And I think, oh, let's see. Yep, on the little ones I didn't. But it wouldn't be bad if you did. I mean, it would look just fine. So, I think that's it. I'm going to come back in a sec. I'm just going to glue him on. I probably glue him on with uh, the dots on there. I think they're probably close enough to dry. I just want to see where he's positioned and I'm just following her design a little bit on the way like his head is hanging off a little. See that? So I'm gonna put 
some glue on kind of like the bottom of his body and this will hold just fine it's not uh, this glue is very strong so I'm just gonna kind of put his wing just like that push down OMG it's just the cutest thing ever I love it so I'm gonna be back I'm just gonna give it a chance to dry and then we're gonna varnish I'll be right back all right everything's dry and I'm just looking around for my varnish which I should have gotten let's see I have so many different things okay this is a satin exterior interior varnish this is a satin interior varnish this is a matte interior varnish but I also wanted to mention that if you have collage podge or decoupage water resistant glue sealer and finish this will work just fine um, it dries crystal clear easy water resistant smooth finish super easy so hey hey that's just Jenny whatever you have will work let's see this is a satin interior exterior varnish by Hobby Lobby's own brand. So I have so many different products. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was she did talk about the way that this was cut because I'm going to attach this to the piece when I varnish. Um, I'm just going to take this as a ceramic tool and I'm just kind of seeing if there's any um, thick bits of paint inside the hole just kind of scraping it a little bit to give it so that it's not too tight I also have uh, wax um, but I am going to put him in here I don't know if this is the right that's not the right one <laughs> This one is for this one because they are different sizes. So just make sure you're putting the, if you got the bundle, make sure you got the right size uh, stand for the right size piece. And then again, I'm going to sand this little piece at the bottom here because I painted it and just make it smoother. I probably shouldn't have painted it. I see uh, like a clump of paint right here. Anywho, uh, cause I want, when I varnish, when I, uh, yeah, when I varnish, I want it to all be together. So that'll help it get in the hole so let me make sure I'm putting it in the right one okay this should be fine now and I'm just wiggling it in it's still not going all the way in see how I force things it's better though so you really don't need to glue it into place it's just gonna be wedged all right, so that's ready to be, and look, look how cute that little flower looks. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay, so for him, same thing. I did paint it. This one seemed to fit much better, though. Yeah, this one went on without any forcing. So we're ready to varnish. Now, I basically already varnished the wings because this is called it's it's paint I can varnish over it but sometimes I think that it's gonna um see this is starlight glittering varnish I could do the whole thing No, I'm not gonna I'm just gonna use let's say I'll use the satin although matte would help it I'll use matte on this because matte would keep this from still popping if you know what I'm saying that doesn't make any sense having a matte varnish is going to Oh, sorry, Kirby. Kirby's under my desk, and I didn't know it. I just kicked her. 
a satin varnish would just be shiny too and it would take away from the sparkly other stuff is what I'm thinking so I just put a little bit on my palette again I'm loading my brush just like I would to base coat and I'm just gonna hit all the, the surface areas and it'll be shiny initially but then it'll dry with a matte finish I kind of don't really want to get it on the um, the wings because I, I don't know if it'll interfere with their shininess but if some gets on there it's okay and now I mean and that being said before you put this on make sure see I just went over my B make because I had I didn't do his body yet make sure you're happy with your design because once you cover it with varnish you won't be able to get it off, you know. I need a little more. And it's interesting because it is 3D, so I'm not used to doing this. I haven't done this, guys. <gasps> uh -oh. We must have a delivery. I'm getting a delivery today, so. Um, I haven't done this in so long. So it makes it exciting again. That's why I love to switch it up with my crafts because I feel like a kid again. No, <laughs> not exactly, but. And I'll put it on the satin varnish. Now let me see if I'll do the base. And again, if you see ridges, try to get them before they dry because it will look like a ridge of dried varnish. You could go around the edges too. It's going to be hard to touch. So I'm going to do that to the whole thing. It's so cute. And you could do two, two coats would probably be plenty. I'll, I don't even know if I'll do two. But I'm just making sure there's no ridges. And that's it. OMG, he's so cute. Thank you, Renee Mullins, for your cute ideas and your cute... Um, see, the other thing is, I could have painted the side of this right here, the hand color, and I didn't. I forgot. And right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, just because the rest of it is. So I just think it would look better if I did that. But nobody's going to notice but me. And that's it. Oh, sign it. Just go ahead and take a permanent pen and sign the back so that you know when, when you painted it. And then the next time, you'll be able to say, look how much I've improved. <laughs> all right, you guys. That's it. He's all done. Thanks for watching.